So how do we systematically work through this? How do we do this? Well, here's the steps. Step one is to ask a question. This is such a simple step that's often overlooked. When it comes to marketing, to understand clients and customer needs, you need to make sure you're not just diving straight into the raw data and sort of cherry picking facts to come up with an answer. In my business, the Changemakers Collective, we focus on consumer insight and brand growth. And when we work with clients and stop to think about this step, we often find that what was being measured isn't necessarily valid for answering the questions that stem from this. Step two is to research existing sources. So the key words here are benchmark and current best practice. Without knowing what is going on in your industry, how do you know what's good or normal or bad? And how do you know whether something is a priority for innovation or it's chugging along just fine? Most importantly, how do you know what outcomes to expect in order to determine the amount of time and money and energy you invest? This is where we can gather our pool of ideas. What do people within the business think will work? What research can they gather to support why they think it will work? We need to look at reliable information for what's happening out there in your industry. Step three is to formulate a hypothesis. So this is a bit of a guessing game, but the, we're making a guess based on the research and data you've gathered. So looking at benchmarks, looking at current best practice, looking at what your competitors are doing, what's your prediction for what you need to do and what will happen as a result? What do you think? Document this hypothesis and it's what's going to help you prove whether it's true or false. Step four is experiment. Design your experiment, record the results. Now, depending on what your question is and your budget is as well, there's all sorts of ways that you can go about this. You could be testing advertising on Facebook to find what content most appeals to your market. You could be running a beta test of an app you've developed. You could be trying out a new sales script. The key with any experiment you run is you need to have three things. You need to have an independent variable. That's what you're testing, like the new sales script or different email headlines. Two is a dependent variable. That's what's changing because of the independent variable, like the number of sales made or the number of emails opened and a control. And this is what you use to see if there is a significant difference between what you usually do and the new thing you are doing. And in business, we usually use baseline data for this. So for example, how many sales were made using the old sales script versus the new ones? Sometimes our data sets will be too small to determine whether there is what we call a statistically significant difference between our tests and our baseline or control. But basically what this means is the difference is could be by chance, could be explained by chance, um, and we don't really have enough data to, to make an informed prediction. So we do need to make sure that we think about when this is appropriate and how much weight we put on the results of these experiments, especially when we're dealing with small numbers. Step five is to draw conclusions. So now we've got all this data, what do we make of it? Are there other explanations for what we observed during our experiment? Are there any confounding variables that we didn't consider? And how does this inform what we do moving forward? For me at the Changemakers and for my team, we're looking at how to attract and serve ideal clients. So we look at how the experiment we've run informs the related questions we established right at the beginning. From here, we then look at how we can use this information to establish optimal standard operating procedures for your business to keep growing. Step six is report and debrief. And this is the final piece of the puzzle. So we need to document everything so that we've, what we've learned becomes part of your business intelligence and think about how can we continue to deepen this knowledge with ongoing practices for continued improvement and innovation. 